Chris Dempsey, candidate for state auditor, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. His spirited opposition to bringing the Summer Olympic Games to Boston made him a local hero to many, and now he's embarking on a statewide race. Is he ready? Let's go on the record with the candidate. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Jennifer Woods. Great to have you with us this morning. And this morning, we do welcome in Chris Dempsey. He is a candidate for state auditor. The state auditor's race is in 2022, so it's a year removed from where we are now. A Democrat from Bookline, he was Assistant Transportation Secretary under Governor Deval Patrick. He has worked as director of an advocacy group on transportation issues. He was a big no on bringing the Olympics to Boston, and they didn't come. He has degrees from Pomona College and Harvard Business School. It's great to see you, Chris, again. Thanks for coming in. Great to be on with both of you again in studio. It's in really studio, nice. Yeah. I know. It is. It is. Um, so uh, we know you put out a statement this past week, and you said that you support Suzanne Bump's policy to either vaccinate or be tested regularly in order to work in the auditor's office. But I'm switching this question a little bit by asking you, do you think Governor Baker's policy of no statewide mandates for state employees or for students wearing masks, is that the right call? Well, let's start with Suzanne Bump, Auditor Bump's decision. She's showing leadership here by saying that employees of the office need to have the vaccine or be tested on a regular basis. I think that is smart. Auditors have to follow the facts and they have to follow science, and that's what she's doing. That would be my advice to any elected official, whether at the local or state level. Follow public health experts, and when you do, you come to the conclusion that we need to be encouraging people to get vaccinated, encouraging people to wear masks, and setting high standards in state government and local government to lead by example for everyone else. So encourage but not mandate, is that what you're saying? Well, I like the auditor's policy, which is you have to have a vaccine or you have to be tested on a weekly basis. I think that will encourage people to get the vaccine, which we know is the safest thing to protect them, their families, and our communities as a whole. And, but, and for state employees, you also believe that would be the best policy overall. I'm running for auditor and I'm focused on that, but my advice to any state elected official would be to adopt the policy that the auditor has adopted in her office. So, so in other words, uh, you, your private health condition is is your is not just your business. If you're a, if you're a public health servant, if you're a public servant. Well, that's the nature of a pandemic: is that this spreads from person to person, and so we need to be thinking about it as a community. Mm -hmm. We need to be leading, and we need elected officials to stand up at the front, not lead from behind. All right. So, so let's talk about the the five trillion dollars the state has spent. It has hasn't spent it. It has over five trillion in federal pandemic money that is waiting to be spent. Billion. I think I wish we had a trillion. A, a billion. Totally you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. One letter could change, or two letters could change the whole word. Right. Governor Baker wants to use a big chunk of that money immediately to keep the economy growing, and and to grow much more needed and affordable housing. So the legislature wants jurisdiction over how the money is spent, saying that there is no urgency. So there's the battle. Is is someone right? Are they both right? Or who is right? I actually don't think there's as much conflict there as you might think. Ed. The governor saying spent since spent some of it now because we know there's urgent needs now. And the legislature is saying, OK, we can do that, but we also need to make sure that we're making investments that allow the Commonwealth to build back stronger than it was before the pandemic. And but that's you, really important. But do you think the legislature should have final say on how the money is spent? Absolutely. Or do you, and the governor should not have any, like, sort of like an amount of money that is needs to be spent immediately instead of going through the legislative process, which you know often takes a long time. Well, I think that's what they've done, Janet. They've given the governor some, some ability to spend. Not, right. not a lot. Not it, a lot. It's up to the legislature to decide how to spend our resources. That's in the Constitution. I think we should follow that, and it's totally appropriate. Uh, your Democratic opponent, Diane DiZaglio, uh, is highlighting the Holyoke Soldiers Home as a yeah. key issue in her campaign, and she's been criticizing Governor for his uh, handling of the debacle. Do you agree with her, and what still needs needs to be done there as far as being state auditor is concerned. Well, it's an absolute tragedy, Janet. We had 77 veterans who served our country, were under the care of state government, and then lost their lives because of the mismanagement in state government. I think, frankly, there's a lot of blame to go, go around here. It's not any one person in particular that failed. It's a system that failed. We need to restore faith in some of our basic government programs, including the soldier's home. And the auditor's office absolutely has a role to play in understanding what happened and, most importantly, making sure that we're preventing it from happening again. So you're on the same page as DeZoglio. This needs more attention, absolutely. All right, so let, let's go through a couple of things. And, and you've worn many hats, as we mentioned, the Olympic hat and the transportation hat, and you want to be auditor, so you're, you're, you're under many umbrellas. So let's stand with this one first. Where do you stand on free MBTA service? 
I think the focus should be on improving MBTA service, and I think that we should be looking at low-income fares to give people access who need it, but your typical commuter is much more focused on making the T work better mm -hmm. than getting a cheaper trip. Mm -hmm. I know that because I've been a daily T commuter for mm -hmm. 20 years, mm -hmm. Ed. We need that service to work better. Let's focus on that. Wouldn't, wouldn't, a, wouldn't a free T get more people on it? Well, I love the conversation about public transit and, and free public transit is worth a discussion. There are leaders I respect who are supporting that, but ultimately it's gonna be less about a dollar seventy versus zero, and more about is my train going to arrive right. on time? Can my bus move faster? And we need resources to invest in the system to make that happen. So, so on that on, on that front, raising fares or increasing commuter service, what, what do you think about that? Well, look, since 1991, we've raised the gas tax a total of three cents. That's 14 percent. In the same period of time, MBTA fares are up 250 percent or more. So we've discouraged people from riding the T. I'm certainly not advocating for increased fares mm -hmm. at the T, but I'm just saying let's make sure we're investing in the system to make it work better for those of us like me who rely on it. We just we just showed some video of the Orange Line. The T has spent over a billion dollars for new cars, yeah. and the Orange Line is derailed six times, mostly to the aging tracks. So I, I, I'm going to use the word blame. I don't, if it's not the right word, tell me. But where sure. does the blame lie? Well, these are there's two areas here at the T that need immediate investigation from the auditor's office. The first is on the red and orange line cars, which are out of service despite a billion dollars of expenditure. The second is on the automated fare collection system, which is supposed to revolutionize the way we pay for our T-fares, but is two years delayed and $300 million over budget, now totaling a billion dollars total. We need more attention on those projects, and that's from the top down, from the governor, from the new MBTA board of directors, and from the auditor's office. Um, Suzanne Bump completely revamped the auditor's office when she took over uh, over 11 years ago. Uh, among her many eye-opening audits was uncovering millions in welfare benefits going to the dead. I could give you a long list, but in the bottom line is she was the ultimate Beacon Hill insider, which you say you are not. So how do you assess her legacy as a Beacon Hill insider, and how would you do things differently? I respect Auditor Bump, and I think she has professionalized the office, and I give her credit for her tenure. But even she has said she believes there's more that can be done in the auditor's office. Most of your viewers think of it as a pretty sleepy and dusty place. It's not a place that draws a lot of attention or has a lot of energy. We can change that and we can fix that. I'm a big believer in the phrase that you can measure a society based on how it treats its most vulnerable. I think state government should be held to the high, the high standard, that same standard in that phrase. And that means looking at some of these core basic programs like mass health, like our unemployment assistance system, and seeing if they're working right, and if they're not, let's fix it for the people that depend on it most. So are you saying because you are not a Beacon Hill insider, you can go places that she did not go as far as the, being auditor is concerned? I'll arrive as auditor as someone who understands how Beacon Hill works, but is not part of Beacon Hill. I've never been a member of the legislature. I've never been an elected official. For me, this is not about a stepping stone to the next point in someone's career. This is about me wanting to dig in to the, every corner of the executive branch and make our decisions based on facts, not on politics. That's what voters expect in an auditor, and that's what I'll de deliver.